Hua Mulan is a woman who lives in a Chinese village. As her father points out, Mulan has very strong qi energy, unlike other women. But according to tradition, only sons are allowed to wield qi, so Mulan's father never told her about her power. Young Mulan, unlike her sister who does needlework, chases a runaway chicken around the village, climbs rooftops, and almost flies using her qi. Although her father is proud of her, the rest of the villagers, including her mother, disapprove of this behavior, inappropriate for a girl. In the evening, Mulan hears her parents arguing. Her mother wants to protect her. Her father insists that the girl will eventually learn how to behave. The woman reminds him that Mulan is their daughter, not their son, and should bring honor to the family only through marriage. But if Mulan continues to act like she does, the girl may be labeled a witch. Her father agrees and explains to Mulan that mastering qi is the destiny of warriors, not daughters. Soon, Mulan will be a young woman, so it's time to start hiding her gift so that she can then do her duty and bring honor to her family. Years pass. In northwest China, on the Great Silk Road, a merchant meets a mysterious woman named Xianyang in the middle of the desert. The woman possesses the merchant and infiltrates the nearest outpost town. The warriors, led by Bori Khan, head towards it. The witch drops the disguise and helps to take over the town from within. While the soldiers are killing the locals, Xian Yang chooses one of the soldiers and uses her magic to transform into him. Disguised as a soldier, the witch arrives at the emperor's palace, where the ruler of the country has already been informed that six garrisons have fallen to Bori Khan. All trade has been disrupted, and if the invasion continues, it'll be the end of the kingdom. All the citizens in the captured garrisons have been slaughtered, with only one soldier surviving. The soldier says that Bori Khan is fighting alongside a woman, and the power of her chi is unimaginable. The Chancellor of the Emperor says that it's forbidden in the state to use chi energy for destructive purposes. The soldier objects. It is the witch's chi that leads the enemy army to victory. The Emperor says he is not intimidated by either the army or the witch and issues a decree of universal conscription. Each family must provide one man to the army. After leaving the palace, the soldier turns back into a witch and then into a bird and flies to Khan to tell him the news. Khan is pleased. He's going to crush the Chinese army and kill the emperor himself personally, for he once killed his father. Xian Yang demands that Khan call her a warrior, not a witch, and reminds him that she can tear him to pieces. Khan says that Xian Yang longs not to be belittled and to be accepted for who she truly is. She can't get what she wants without Khan. Meanwhile, a grown-up Mulan returns to her parents' house after a horseback ride. Her mother tells her that the matchmaker has found a suitable husband for Mulan, and her father confirms that everything has already been arranged and that it will be good for the family. Mulan agrees. She's dressed up and prepared for the meeting with the matchmaker, where Mulan tries to follow the protocol of the tea ceremony. But a spider appears, which scares Mulan's younger sister, so Mulan places the teapot on it. The matchmaker gets angry and demands to put the teapot in the center of the table where it should be. The spider escapes, Mulan's sister screams, the spider jumps on the matchmaker, and everything descends into chaos. In the end, the matchmaker declares shame to the Hua family in front of the whole village because they failed to raise a good daughter. At that moment, Imperial soldiers arrive in the village to recruit one man from each house. Mulan's father, despite his age and an old wound that makes him barely able to walk without a cane, still takes the oath of allegiance and pledges to fight for the Emperor. Both Mulan and her mother realize that her father will never return from this war. He can barely hold a sword. Then the woman changes into her father's armor, takes the weapon and the conscription scroll. In its place, Mulan leaves her crest. His father finds it in the morning, realizing that Mulan has gone to war instead of him. If he gives his daughter away, she will be killed by their own people, and if he does not, Mulan could be killed by the enemy. All they can do is pray to the spirits of their ancestors. On her way to the camp where the recruits gather, Mulan loses her way and almost dies in the rocks. Suddenly, a phoenix, the symbol of their family, flies to her and leads her out of the trap. At the recruit camp, Mulan introduces herself as Hua Jun, 
and in order to act like a man, almost starts a fight with another recruit named Chen Honggui. They are separated by General Tung, an old comrade of Mulan's father. Later, when the recruits are sent to wash up, Mulan volunteers on the night guard duty to avoid being exposed. In the morning, the rules are explained to everyone. Stealing, desertion, and bringing women to the camp are punishable by death, then dishonesty will be punished by expulsion and disgrace for the recruit, his family, and the whole village. Long, grueling training begins, and Mulan gradually gets better at it. She also makes friends with the other recruits and even argues with them about what the perfect woman should be like. Even though everyone laughs, Hong Wei clearly likes her, and in the evening he even shares his fears with Mulan. The guy is afraid to talk to women, let alone get married. He also advises Mulan to wash herself because she smells bad. During one of her training sessions, Mulan accidentally uses chi energy and gets very upset about it because she was told to hide her chi. But since she's pretending to be a man, everyone is thrilled with her fighting skills. When Mulan does go to the river at night to wash herself, Hong Wei unexpectedly joins her. The woman turns her back on him to hide her breasts, which the guy interprets as hostility, but he insists they are not enemies and would fight together on the battlefield. Meanwhile, the chefs of 12 tribes come to Khan for a council. They are unhappy that they depend on a witch, as witches are not to be trusted. Khan calms the chiefs by saying that the witch serves him and knows who her master is. He promises riches and revenge for all that the emperor's troops did during the last war. Xian Yang is unhappy with the way Khan treats her, but Khan, having won the chief's support, tells her not to forget her place. Mulan is summoned by General Tong, who tells her that she needs to develop her gift mastering the power of Qi without letting her father's legacy hold her back. Mulan begins to train her special ability and soon becomes stronger, tougher, and faster than the other recruits. Khan's army continues the offensive, forcing Tung to finish the training early and send his regiment into battle. They are assigned to defend one of the fortresses. Along the way, Mulan becomes increasingly worried that she cannot be honest with her comrades and the general. She tries to confess her deception to Tung, but he thinks Mulan is merely afraid of battle reassures her, and even promises to introduce the soldier to his daughter when the war is over. Some time later, the regiment stumbles upon the remains of the soldiers of the 4th Regiment in what used to be their camp. After the battle with the nomads, not a single recruit survived. Eventually, the soldiers make it to the fortress they were ordered to guard. Borakan's army is half a day's ride from the fortress and getting ready for battle. The general orders to march at dawn. At night, Mulan and her comrades sit by the fire, and the woman calms them by telling them that there is no courage without fear, and they will all survive tomorrow's battle because they will have each other's backs. Hong Wei looks at her with a smile and nods approvingly, though he notices Mulan's hands are trembling. The Emperor's army confronts the nomadic troops outside the fortress, but Khan declares that it won't make a difference. A battle begins. Mulan is chasing several soldiers until Xian Yang, in the form of a bird, knocks her out of the saddle. The witch turns into a human. They fight, and Xian Yang says that Mulan's deceit is taking away her power and poisoning her chi. Mulan continues to insist that she is a man, and the witch gains the upper hand. Mulan survives only because of the skin she used to bandage her breast to hide her gender. The blade gets stuck in it but doesn't wound the woman. When Mulan regains consciousness, she sees the phoenix and makes an important decision. She returns to the battlefield, dropping her disguise and armor. This allows her to use her chi to its fullest potential. Xi and Yang comes to help the nomads, forcing the emperor's soldiers to stand in one place where they're fired upon with a trebuchet. Mulan uses the helmets of fallen Chinese warriors and her archery skills to confuse the nomads. They end up accidentally firing at a snowy mountain. This triggers an avalanche that buries the nomads underneath. The emperor's soldiers flee, but Hong Wei lingers to rescue a fellow soldier and nearly dies in the snow. Mulan saves him at the last moment. After the battle, Mulan reveals her identity to her comrades and the general. 
He calls the woman an imposter, a traitor to the squad, and says that Mulan has brought dishonor on the family. Her deceit is a general shame. Mulan says she would rather be executed, but instead she's sentenced to expulsion and the general promises to kill her if she tries to return. Mulan leaves and afterwards sobs while sitting on top of a rock. Xian Yang appears next to her and says that she understands Mulan. Xian Yang was very young when people began calling her a witch and banished her. She had no country, no home, or family. She and Mulan are alike, so the witch offers Mulan to join her. Together, they will be stronger and find their home, and Bori Khan will win the war. Very soon, he'll conquer the capital, and right now he's on his way to the emperor. However, Mulan rejects the offer because her task is to fight for the country and protect the emperor. She returns to the fortress where her former regiment is stationed and tells the general that the emperor is in mortal danger. Tung draws his sword, about to execute the woman, but she asks him to listen to her first. Khan has lured troops to the Silk Road to march to the capital and assassinate the emperor. The enemies have gotten too far ahead and the imperial army won't be able to keep up with them but a small, well-trained squad stands a chance. The general refuses to believe Mulan, for she has deceived them all before. Hong Wei stands up for Mulan, saying that she risked everything by revealing herself and therefore is braver than any man, and moreover, she's the best warrior in the regiment. The rest of the soldiers support him, and the general decides to follow Mulan to the capital of the empire. Meanwhile, Khan's warriors sneak into the imperial palace. The witch takes on the guise of a chancellor and tells the emperor that Bori Khan is in the city in a new palace that's just being built and that he challenges the emperor to a duel. The emperor immediately accepts the challenge, intending to kill Bori Khan the same way he killed his father. Still posing as the chancellor, Xian Yang orders the chief of guards to gather all of the emperor's guards in the square so that no one is left at the towers or the gates. When Mulan and the squad arrive in the city, they too end up in the square, the gates close behind them, and the soldiers and all the guards are attacked by Bori Khan's warriors. Tung orders Mulan to protect the emperor. The emperor arrives at the not-yet-built palace with a small number of guards, but all his guards are immediately killed. However, the ruler of China himself, skilled in qi, confronts Khan's warriors until they subdue him with ropes. Khan orders them to attack the city and capture it, while he himself stays with the emperor. With the help of her comrades, Mulan rushes forward, runs into the throne room, but sees Xian Yang sitting on the throne instead of the emperor. They talk. Mulan tries to convince the witch that there is a place for her among people and she can live a decent life. Mulan asks for help in finding the emperor. Xian Yang suddenly turns into a bird and flies out of the palace. Mulan follows her across the rooftops. Khan prepares to kill the emperor in a fire, explaining that he's avenging his father. The emperor does not react to his words and does not respond, keeping his cool. Khan taunts his old enemy, saying that all the sons of the empire have fallen to the swords and arrows of the nomads, so no one will come to help him. Xian Yang appears nearby to report that Khan's attack has been fiercely repulsed and the army is led by a woman from a small village. Khan realizes that the witch has brought Mulan to help the emperor and shoots an arrow at Mulan. Xian Yang jumps in front of the arrow and saves Mulan, only to die in her arms later. Mulan enters the palace where she engages in a battle with Bori Khan. As they fight, the nomad knocks her father's sword out of Mulan's hands and it falls into the molten iron below, but the emperor encourages Mulan. She continues the battle, eventually seizing Khan's weapon and pushing him down. While Mulan frees the Emperor, Khan raises his bow and sends an arrow at the Emperor with his last strength. The Emperor intercepts it at his throat and then, after exchanging glances with Mulan, tosses the arrow upwards. Using Qi, Mulan's foot strike sends the arrow straight into Khan's chest. He dies. A little later, a lavish feast is held at the palace. In front of everyone, the emperor tells Mulan that the people owe her a victory and the emperor himself his life. In gratitude for her service and loyalty, he invites her to take her place among the greatest warriors of the empire and to lead a squad of personal guards. Mulan thanks him, 
but refuses because she left home in secret deceiving her family. Her decisions could bring shame to the family, so the woman must return home and redeem herself. The emperor praises her. Loyalty to family is the most important virtue. Mulan leaves the palace. On the bridge, Hong Hui catches up with her and says that he can't let her go without saying goodbye and then gives her his hand. Mulan bids him farewell, touches his hand in embarrassment, smiles, and quickly gets into the saddle. Soon she returns to the village, to the great surprise of the other villagers and the joy of her sister. The sister says she's betrothed. Her fiancé is handsome and not afraid of spiders. Her mother comes running out and hugs Mulan, and afterward her father approaches. Mulan asks his forgiveness for stealing his sword, armor, and horse, and also for losing the sword. Now she realizes how precious that sword was to her father. Barely holding back tears, the man says that nothing is more important to him than his daughter and it is he who must ask for forgiveness because he pushed Mulan away with his foolish pride even though he should have seen her as a warrior. Now he realizes who Mulan really is. They hug. Suddenly, General Tung and the soldiers enter the village. Mulan's father greets his old friend. It turns out that Tung has come to present Mulan with gifts on behalf of the emperor for saving the dynasty and the kingdom. When the matchmaker hears this, she almost faints. The gifts are a new sword and a jade scabbard. Tung announces that Mulan has brought honor to her ancestors, family, village, and country, and says that the emperor is once again asking the woman to join the best warriors of the empire. Mulan looks at her reflection in the blade and sees a phoenix, the symbol of her family, fly behind her. The woman raises her head and sees the phoenix slowly flying towards the sun. 